Good morning, students. Uh, today we're going to look at Objective 7-7, seven, seven, um, or Lesson 7 in Module 5, called Exponential Growth and Decay. So we learned about the exponential equation in the last unit, and today we're going to actually use that concept to look at some things that will grow in amount or will decrease in amount. So we have two main concepts, exponential growth and exponential decay that we want to think about. And first thing I'm going to do is give you a general formula, and then we'll look at some specific examples. So in general terms, we learn that the exponential equation is a times b to the x, and we're going to be thinking about a as the initial amount of something, and b as a growth factor how much does something grow over a period of time. Now, when b is greater than 1, that's what makes this a growth formula because it will cause your amount to increase over time. And so when we graph those, we're going to see that they generally growth. We would expect them to go up. And so that's exactly what our graph does. When we have exponential decay, decay is another word for um, a gradual decrease. So our exponential formula doesn't really change. We always have in an exponential a variable as an exponent. So that's going to be the unknown thing in our equation. A is going to still be our initial amount. And B, we're going to call it the decay factor because we're going to see that b is between 0 and 1. So that would be like a fraction or a decimal. So the format of the equation doesn't change. It's just that b value that's going to determine whether it's a growth or a decay. So if we take a look at example 1, we're going to see some various equations. And we want to state whether it is exponential growth, decay, or neither. So if it's exponential, we're going to look and find what that growth and decay factor is. So in fact, that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to find where is my b in this equation. And my b here is 5 halves. So just because it's a fraction, I can't assume anything. I want to convert that into a decimal or just be thinking about whether or not it's between 0 and 1 or if it's greater than 1. So if I think of 5 halves as 2.5, 2.5, I can clearly see that my b is greater than 1, so I am going to have a growth. And it's definitely an exponential because I have that x up in the exponent. So in letter b, I'm taking a look and I see what looks like an a value here, but then I've got my x is a um, is a base for an exponent, and my exponent is just 2 here. So I've got an x squared equation. This is not uh, an exponential, so I would have to say that it's neither. So under now it's your turn. These are our try it problems. Go ahead and pause the video. These are going to be just like the teacher-led example, and we're going to state whether it's growth, decay or neither, and then we want to identify the growth and decay factor if it is one of those. So go ahead and pause the video and give it your best shot. And welcome back. Hopefully you pause the video and work these on your own. We've got uh, letter A is going to be a decay because my growth factor or my decay factor is a fraction. In letter B, we don't have an x for our exponent, so that is neither. I've got, I don't have an a value, but I do have a b value. b is 5.1, so that automatically tells me that is going to be a growth equation. And in the last one, I have an x for my exponent, so I know it's exponential, so now I'm looking for that b. b is 0 0.123, which is definitely between 0 and 1. So I am looking at a decay formula here. So on to the next page. 
We want to take a look at some graphs now. Can we tell whether our graph is exponential growth, decay, or neither? So what we're going to be looking for is the general shape of the graph. It is um, decaying, or it's decreasing very, very fast, and then it slows down. Um, and this tail, this is called an asymptote. You don't have to know that word, but you're going to use it a lot as you grow in your math classes. So we've got this tail of our function. So it's decaying very quickly and then it slows down. That is the shape of an exponential. And this one's going downward, so we're going to say that's a decay. And then as I'm analyzing letter B, um, hopefully the word that pops into your head is that this is a linear equation. It's the shape of a line. It's not an exponential function at all. So you could just say neither, but um, it's not exponential. So even though it has that negative slope, it is decreasing. It's not an exponential decay. So now it's your turn, and these are the try it problems, and just take a look at the two graphs and identify whether it's exponential growth, exponential decay, or neither. And pause the video. So looking at letter A, hopefully you pause and you put your own conjectures there. Um, letter A is uh, not an exponentially shaped graph. In fact, this is uh, one that you've seen a little bit at the beginning of class. It's a quadratic graph. We're going to be studying those very soon, but it's definitely not exponential, so that would be neither. And then letter B is a little bit tricky. Um, even though we're, our graph from left to right is increasing, uh, the parent function of that graph is our exponential decay graph. So what happened here is that it must have had an A value that was negative, which caused it to flip over the x-axis, but that's the shape of our exponential decay. So now let's take a look and see, so we looked at some graphs, now let's take a look at some tables and see what we can tell about growth, decay, or neither. So as I'm going up by one in each graph, here I'm going, I see a plus three each time. I'm looking for whether or not it's times something. So here from three to six, it's times two. Here from six to nine, it's actually times 1.5 from nine to 12. So I'm not being multiplied by the same number each time. So in letter A, That's really weird. So, okay, according to my example sheet, this is letter B, and this is letter A, but um, hopefully you have the same one that I do. So anyway, um, this first one, I'm going to go ahead and label it. This is the chart for letter A, and it's not going up by the same multiple each time. So that's neither. And that brings us to an important point. We were at the beginning of the year discussing the patterns in these tables, and you can see this is going plus three each time. Maybe you were predicting that this would be linear, and if you were predicting that, you're correct. And so a linear equation will never be exponential. This uh, goes along with one of our um, arithmetic or arithmetic sequences that we learned about. And so those will not end up to be exponential. But as I look at letter B or my second table here, I am, as I go up one each time on the X's, do you see that each time you're multiplying by three on the Y's? And so having that common multiple or common ratio, hopefully that terminology is familiar to you and you Remember that being a geometric sequence. And so when we have a geometric where we're multiplying by the same common ratio each time, that is definitely an exponential. 
and we're going by a factor of three. So that's telling me my B or my growth factor is uh, three. So now take a look at um, the try it problems, pause the video and see if you can analyze these two tables and make some predictions about whether or not they're exponential and whether it's growth or decay. So welcome back. Hopefully you paused the video and we're looking, I'm going to label this one A and this one B. So hopefully we're looking at um, what's going on. So our X's are always going up by one. So those are nice and predictable. And I'm looking at my Y's. From, to go from one to two, I multiply by two. To go from two to eight, I multiply by four. And from eight to 48, I multiply by six. So as you can see, there's a pattern that I can predict, but it's not the same pattern each time. So just because something's predictable doesn't make it exponential. So A is going to be neither. And let's take a look at B. So the X's are going up by one each time. Now to go from 200 to 100, and I didn't leave myself some room here, so let me just draw a line. To go from 200 to 100, hopefully you realized, um, a lot of you would probably say you're dividing by two, which is true, but when we're talking about geometric sequences and growth and decay factors, we really want to look at what do we multiply by each time. So dividing by two is the same as multiplying by a half. So that's really what we want to focus on when we're talking about what is our growth or decay factor. And again, to go from 50 to 25, we multiply by a half. So we've got ourselves an exponential decay. And our decay factor is a half. So that concludes our lesson on exponential growth and decay. There's a lot in that lesson, but mostly you're just you're identifying whether it's a growth or decay. And you're looking at the different um, forms. So I'm going to summarize this unit by saying we learn to identify exponential growth and decay. By looking at equations, graphs, and tables. So it's those three formats that we can look and identify whether something's growing exponentially or not. Thanks for listening.